Dr. Yaga Venugopal Reddy, better known as Y. V. Reddy born of August 1941, is a retired Indian Administrative Service IAS officer of the 1964 batch belonging to Andhra Pradesh Kadri. Reddy served as Governor of the Reserve Bank of India India's Central Bank from 6 September 2003 until 5 September 2008. In 2010, he was awarded India's second highest civilian honour, the Padma Vibhushan. Education and honours Reddy received his MA in Economics from Madras University, India, and his PhD from Asmania University, Hyderabad. He also holds a diploma in Economic Planning from the Institute of Social Studies, Netherlands. Reddy was awarded the degrees of Doctor of Letters honoris causa by Sri Venkateswara University, India, and Doctor of Civil Law honoris causa by the University of Mauritius. On 17 July 2008, he was made an Honorary Fellow of the London School of Economics. <laughs> Positions held Venugopal Reddy was appointed the 21st Governor of the Reserve Bank of India on 6 September 2003 and served in that position for five years. In 1996, Reddy had been appointed Deputy Governor of RBI. He has also worked with the International Monetary Fund as Executive Director in 2002. Prior to joining the Indian Administrative Services he worked as a lecturer from 1961. While in the IAS, he held the positions of Secretary Banking in Ministry of Finance and Principal Secretary in Government of Andhra Pradesh and has worked with the governments of China, Bahrain, Ethiopia and Tanzania. He has been a visiting fellow, London School of Economics, a full-time UGC visiting professor in Department of Business Management, Asmania University, full-time visiting faculty, Administrative Staff College of India and continues to be honorary professor at Centre for Economic and Social Studies at Hyderabad. Reddy was also distinguished professor of the Indian Institute of Technology Madras. Reddy was member of the Commission of Experts of the President of the UN General Assembly on Reforms of International Monetary and Financial System. In addition to the chair, Professor Joseph Stiglitz USA, members of this UN Commission were drawn from Japan, Western Europe, Africa, Latin America, South and East Asia. Reddy was president of the Indian Econometric Society during 2011. Reddy was on the advisory board of Institute for New Economic Thinking the INET Advisory Board includes Nobel laureates as well as other prominent economists. Reddy was on International Advisory Board of the Columbia Program on Indian Economic Policies, Columbia University, New York. He was a member of an informal international group of prominent persons on international monetary reforms. He was also on advisory group of eminent persons to advise the Finance Minister of India on G20 issues. Reddy was elected as Conference President of the Indian Economic Association IEA for the year 2014. He was the Chairman of the 14th Finance Commission of India since the 3rd of January 2013. Currently, Dr. Reddy is an honorary professor at the Centre for Economic and Social Studies, CES, Hyderabad. Topic: <laughs> Contributions. Reddy has worked on piloting a calibrated approach to financial sector reforms. A 19 December 2008 article in the New York Times has credited the tough lending standards he imposed on the Indian banks as RBI governor for saving the entire Indian banking system from the sub-prime and liquidity crisis of 2008. At the Reserve Bank, he was member secretary of two high-level committees, one on balance of payments and the other on public sector disinvestments. Dr. C. Rangarajan, former Governor, Reserve Bank of India headed both the committees. Reddy was also a member of the Reserve Bank of India's Policy Group on External Debt Statistics. Reddy is credited to have played a crucial role in framing macro-economic policies that helped quarantine the country from the domino effect of the financial crisis encountered by the Southeast Asian countries during the later part of the 1990s. He, along with Dr. C. Rangarajan, is also credited with the formulation of the course to be steered by the country to come out of the then balance of payments crisis. 
In the Indian context, he was the first to use the term financial inclusion in April 2005 in his annual policy statement as Governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Later on, this concept gained ground and came to be widely used in India and abroad. While recognizing the concerns in regard to the banking practices that tend to exclude rather than attract vast sections of population, banks were urged in the annual policy statement to review their existing practices to align them with the objective of financial inclusion. As governor, he saw his job as making sure Indian banks did not get too caught up in the bubble mentality. He banned the use of bank loans for the purchase of raw land, and sharply curtailed securitizations and derivatives, and essentially prohibited off balance sheet financing. He increased risk weightings on commercial buildings and shopping mall construction and increased bank reserve requirements. In one of his interviews, Joseph E. Stiglitz, professor of economics at Columbia University and Nobel laureate, had said, if America had a central bank chief like Y.V. Ready, the U.S. economy would not have been in such a mess. Less well discussed is his work on rural banking, particularly on reviving cooperative banks and his focus on the common person. His term was marked by an emphasis on financial inclusion with the aid of information technology. He is widely consulted on many financial issues by institutions both in India as well as the world over. Reddy authored a book titled, India and the Global Financial Crisis Managing Money and Finance, published by Orient Black Swan in 2009. This book which provided insights into the making of public policies across a spectrum of areas between the years 2003 and 2008, a period of rapid growth of the Indian economy as well as extraordinary challenges for the conduct of monetary policy was among the best sellers in India. His book titled, ''Global Crisis, Recession and Uneven Recovery'' Orient Black Swan, 2011 was a sequel to 2009 best-selling work. It provided a thinker and experienced policymaker's understanding of the genesis, anatomy and impact of the financial crisis, and of the lessons it offered. The book highlighted that one of the consequences of the crisis is the shift in the balance of economic power in favor of Asia. Also, it highlighted the role of central banks in the evolution of the global financial crisis, in particular the role played by central banks in developing countries. Erudite discussions on India's experience in regulating the financial sector and the need for reform in India's financial sector in the light of global debates are some of the key features of this book. Navigating through the debates between 2010 and 2012 on the continuing global financial crisis, his book Economic Policies and in India's Reform Agenda, New Thinking Orient Black Swan, 2013, reflected the confidence of Reddy who steered the nation's banks to safer waters. In this book, Reddy seeks a change in economic thought and policy making. Arguing for a three fold shift in the discipline, he calls for broadening the focus of policy makers, improvisation in the tools employed by economists, and an emphasis on empirical evidence. This new thinking, he says, will contribute to India's accelerated development. His most recent book, Advice and Dissent, published in 2017 by Harper Collins, Reddy gives an account of the debate and thinking behind some landmark events, and some remarkable initiatives of his own, whose benefits reached the man on the street. This book provides a ringside view of the license permit Raj, drought, bonded labor, draconian forex controls, the balance of payments crisis, liberalization, high finance, and the emergence of India as a key player in the global economy. He also shares his experience of working closely with some of the architects of India's economic change, Manmohan Singh, Bimal Jalan, C. Rangarajan, Yashwant Sinha, Jaswant Singh and P. Chidambaram. This book was reviewed favorably and extensively. Reddy was invited to deliver the prestigious The Per Jacobson Foundation Lecture in June 2012 at the Bank for International Settlements in Switzerland. In this lecture on society, economic policies and the financial sector, the main message he gave was that society has put its trust in central banks and as such it expects central bank to ensure trust and confidence in money and finance and serve the interest of the masses. Timothy Geithner, former U.S. Secretary of the Treasury and President of Federal Reserve Bank of New York, in his book Stress Test, Reflections on Financial Crises, published in May 2014, wrote about his brief encounter with India's former central bank governor Y.V. Reddy who gave him a copy of Complications, Notes from the Life of a Young Surgeon by Atul Gawande, Reddy told me it was the best book one would ever read about central banking, and the parallels with financial crisis management really are striking. It's about making life or death decisions in a fog of uncertainty, dealing with the constant risk of catastrophic failure. 
Later while talking with Martin Wolf during his lunch with the Financial Times, Geithner mentions it was a fascinating book, in part because he Gawande described how in that profession they do things that in economics we don't that well. They have these things they call morbidity and mortality reviews every Friday, where they go over mistakes. This story received mention in several book reviews. In a book review, Sam McNerney notes Reddy's recommendation is surprising but sensible. Gawande, a surgeon by trade, has knack for elucidating the inefficiencies of modern medicine and contrasting hospital management with business management. In another review of this book, Eric Warders write, To be clear, this book has absolutely nothing to do with central banking, at least not on the surface of it. This book is Dr. Gawande's retellings of myriad medical emergencies he encountered as a surgeon and how he managed the stress, uncertainty, and challenges that they brought on. For Geithner, the parallels were striking, as both men had to act quickly with limited information, sometimes on a hunch, with dire consequences at stake. Quote, in this path-breaking presidential address on a tale of two commissions and missing links, at 97th Annual Conference of the Indian Economic Association in Udaipur on December 27, 2014, Reddy dwelt at length on the origin, evolution, linkages, achievements, limitations and the debates relating to the two major commissions on economic affairs in India. He also cited the success of the Chinese model where the concept of plan had been replaced by guideline in the country's 11th five-year program. He noted, the change led to China's transition from a Soviet-style planned economy to a socialist market economy and gained greater responsibility and power in overseeing China's economic development. Controversies Dr. Reddy often courted controversy for deliberately guiding the Indian rupee lower through verbal intervention. Some of his media talks were perceived as ill timed. In December 2003, Dr. Reddy was dragged into a controversy when someone impersonating him called the then regional director of RBI Bhopal, Mrs. Uma Sebramaniam, and asked her to lend 20 lakh Indian rupees United States dollars for a personal emergency. Sebramaniam was able to collect only 9 Indian rupees, 000 by various means, which included coercing her staff members. She then handed over the money to an accomplice of the imposter. She did not get back to Dr. Reddy regarding this incident. The sensational fraud rocked and embarrassed the RBI, and infuriated Dr. Reddy, who insisted on a full inquiry. <laughs> 